And then finally, Herb Gupton, also board certified in clinical psychology and involved in kind of pursuing the, uh, the uh, currently existing board. We're also um, excited uh, as a function of his involvement. Many of you are familiar with their work in this specialty area. I don't need to talk about that. They'll be talking about that throughout the day. So I don't want to take any more of your time. So having said that, let me introduce uh, and hand it over to our speakers. Thanks very much. I'm a retired Army psychologist. And I don't remember when this was first implemented. I'm going to say probably back in the mid 1990s, as I recall, um, the uh, Army in particular started giving uh, board specialty pay for ABEP specialists for no other board certification, which there are many, but only uh, ABEP. And it amounted not to a lot, but $4,000 a year at that time. My understanding now is that it is approximately 5000 a year. So if you're an active duty military psychologist, you get an ABEP or recognition for ABEP through board specialty pay of about uh, 5000 There is also a more recent uh, legislation that was passed, and I would just uh, cite um, it was the Duncan Hunter National Defense Authorization Act of uh, FY 2009. For those in the room, the two or three that I see, they're under the age of 32. <laughs> if uh, you want to go on active duty in the military, there is what I would call a recruitment bonus. I think they call it an accessions bonus. We commonly call it a recruitment bonus of $400,000. That's a pretty good little paycheck, paid out at 100000 a year over four years for those people who have ABAP board specialist status. Uh, they're looking for that particular population. Dave has already mentioned the Council of Specialties in Professional Psychology. And this essentially is to take some of the confusion for the public out of uh, the so many board certifications. You know, you can see around um, people are board certified in this, that, or the other by various organizations. And uh, this clarifies in that in that they only recognize ABAP as a uh, board certification. Lastly, just to mention that uh, ABAP has an early entry program. So if you're a very early uh, career psychologist, maybe even not having graduated yet, you're able then to start providing your credentials to ABAP where they store those, much say as the National Register. So it makes it a lot easier, and I can tell you, uh, looking back, uh, if you have to go back and recreate some of these documents, proof of your internship or postdoc or those kinds of things from years ago, if you don't do this when you're younger, it's just not as easy as one might think. I want to briefly talk about uh, some of the benefits of board certification. and. Uh, some people will say, well, this is not really my motivation, that I'm not going for board certification so I can make more money. And I understand that. It may or may not have any impact on uh, your particular circumstances in making you more profitable. I think uh, the perspective here, though, that you might want to consider is potentially what's happening in the future. Where are we going? And has already been mentioned, the affiliation with uh, IACP and trying to market ourselves better as police psychologists through the police chiefs, both IACP and major city chiefs, to make a point to them as to what it means to be board certified. Um, as many of you have experience right now in going out and you have contracts with various agencies, probably largely based on your own personal initiatives, your relationships that you've developed over a period of time. What might happen though in the future is that this will become somewhat more structured in that police chiefs may have some expectation that new hires, new contracts might be board certified. So I think it has the potential at some point for the next generation perhaps to begin to impact income, uh, less so perhaps than us older folks. 
decreased malpractice liability costs uh, simply because of uh, ABEP. You have opportunity. I think uh, IPAID, for example, does not, um, but one of the insurers I know does give a discount for ABEP. Streamline licensing. I don't know how many of you, probably many, are licensed in different states. Uh, mobility is still uh, seemingly in its infancy in terms of uh, at a national level, uh, trying to move from state to state. I was licensed for a number of years, and then when I decided to stay in Hawaii, needed a Hawaii license. And uh, because I had ABEP, went in, applied under ABEP, and it was a fairly easy procedure. Didn't have to do a lot of the things that I had to do once upon a time. Did have to take a jurisprudence exam, and that was roughly it. Now, a different experience, I was recently licensed in Texas, and they really didn't care. Uh, they didn't care about National Register. They didn't care about CPQ. So I saw no particular advantage in that state with ABEP because I had to go through the whole nut. That was just the way they did it. Same increased practice mobility. It just gives you more flexibility. Uh, having the credential, boards are becoming more sensitive, more aware, and I think that whether you are licensed or not, it, get, it just makes it easier to move from one location to another in order to practice. Postdoctoral and internship credibility. And this, for me, was sort of why I initially applied for ABEP. Um, I was chief of a psychology department in a training hospital where we had uh, an APA accredited internship program and an APA accredited postdoc program. And certainly we endorsed uh, ABEP board certification. And for our postdoc program in particular, we expected those postdoc graduates to pursue ABEP. And that was a part of our curriculum, uh, much as we're doing here today. We would try to prepare our graduates for board certification. And I felt it somewhat disingenuous of myself to not be board certified. If I'm going to be the program director for these various training programs, then I should lead by example. And that's what really got me into this uh, in, the, in the beginning, um, just trying to set the example. Increased job satisfaction probably goes uh, without saying. I think, uh, I think ABEP is, is a personal issue. Does it mean something to you? Is it a uh, sense of accomplishment, a sense of achievement? Does it add to uh, your professional sense of self? Does it contribute to you being able to fulfill your job better? If those answers are yes, then I think you get a lot of personal significance out of it. If you're doing this for some other reason, it may be a little bit uh, more difficult. Increase marketability. Again, I think over time, we're going to look at this standard, if you will, um, being raised such that ABEP is more and more of an expectation. I mean, it's been around for a long time. And uh, you might ask yourself or others, you know, why did you do this? Why are you doing this? Why am I doing this? And uh, some of us who are maybe a little older have a harder time answering that question. But for the generation coming up, Increased marketability. It is going to make you, I think, more competitive over time. Goes without saying, just like licensure, um, ABEP is a specialized standard, board certified specialist in a particular area. And this is what we're looking to establish with police chiefs, is that police chiefs can have greater confidence in the psychologists that they hire if they are a board certified specialist. Consolidation of skills and knowledge become more focused. That's what we're here today, to kind of point you in the direction to say, okay, what is this standard? What, what do you need to know? What skills do you need to have? Domains and competencies, focusing on the specific skills, body of knowledge that you really need to have at this point. 